No one knows a team better than their coach, and that's what makes them so uniquely qualified to roast them. The players, they're horrible. These my players are no good. I mean, Pepper's like, no excuses. I got, you know what? I got 22 excuses. 11 on my offense and 11 on my defense. It's one thing when the opposing team, the media, or the fans make fun of you. It's another thing when it comes from the person who knows you best, and it cuts a little deeper because you know it's true. And that knowledge usually turns into soundbite gold. Coaches savagely roasting their own teams is coming up right after this. The Bears were who the Cardinals thought they were, and they let them off the hook on a fateful Monday night in 2006. What could have possibly happened that led to the late, great Dennis Green losing his mind at the podium after his team lost to the Chicago Bears at home? It started with a 20-0 lead for Arizona. Their rookie quarterback Matt Leinart was on fire, tossing two early touchdown passes to put them on track for what looked like it would be a massive upset. The Bears quarterback that night was Rex Grossman, who ended the game with zero touchdowns and four picks and still somehow got the W. The Cardinals didn't allow the Bears to score a single offensive touchdown. When Green spoke to the media, he lost it and blew up on his own team, saying, what, what, what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like it's bull? We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. What Green meant by all that was the Cardinals had figured out in the preseason that the Bears were a largely one-dimensional team, relying heavily on their defense. And since Arizona had figured out their defense and scored 23 points, that should have been enough for the win. But sloppy mistakes allowed the Bears to come back despite the Cardinals' game plan working to a T. Hey, an epic rant nonetheless. Pop is known mostly for roasting sideline reporters that ask him some of the dumbest questions known to man, if the question was obvious enough to permit Pop's wrath. But five titles wasn't enough to save his spurs from a few tongue lashings from one of the greatest coaches the NBA has ever seen. After a loss to the Chicago Bulls in 2016, Pop went in on his team after feeling they had gone through the motions. I don't remember playing tonight. No Newt Rockney speeches. It's your job. If you're a plumber and you don't do your job, you don't get any work, Popovich said. I don't think a plumber needs a pep talk. A doctor botches operations and he's not a doctor anymore. If you're a basketball player, you come ready. It's called maturity. It's your job. Damn, that's savage. They were 18 and five at the time, by the way. Just a year earlier, the Spurs fell to a Knicks team that was just 13 and 53. As you could probably guess, Pop didn't take that well. We didn't respect the game. We didn't respect our opponents, said Popovich. It was a pathetic performance, and I hope that every player is embarrassed. Not because we are supposed to win the game, but it is about how you play the game. This is what it feels like to disappoint your father. Managing is getting paid for home runs someone else hits, Casey Stengel once said about his sedentary role. Stengel was a relic of pre-war baseball that stuck around through changing and turbulent times, and his irreverent attitude reflected that fish-out-of-water situation. Late in his playing days, it was clear that Stengel was a trash talker of the highest order, telling the Toledo Mud Hens in 1929, I got a tip on the market for you fellows. Buy Pennsylvania Railroad because tomorrow night about a dozen of you bums will be riding it. He also told him to buy GameStop. After he was done as a player and ready to get paid for someone else's dingers, Stengel won seven World Series as the manager of the Yankees and was fired in 1960 despite having a winning record. He was seen as too old to relate to the players and Stengel fired back. I'll never make the mistake of being 70 again. He might have burned that bridge, but there was a new opportunity across town with the star of Mets. Stengel was 74, joking that he wouldn't quit until the time comes when they have to push me out to the mound in a wheelchair to change pitchers. The 1962 Mets only won 40 games, and the whole time Stengel was a Met, they never finished with anything approaching a winning record. Stengel once said that his young left fielder Ron Swoboda had amazing strength, amazing power. He can grind the dust out of the bat. He will be great, super, even wonderful. Now, if only he could learn to catch a fly ball. When you lose close to 100 games every season, you have to make everyone laugh or else 
they may start crying. We're a much improved ball club, Stengel said about his Mets at the end of his career. Now we lose in extra innings. And of course he uttered the now iconic saying, can anybody here play this game? Damn son, that's cold. The playoffs in this economy? In 2001, Jim Mora and the Indianapolis Colts were just trying to win a damn game. Everybody remembers Peyton Manning's Colts as the juggernaut that won double digit games every single year, but that isn't the case here. The team hit a particularly low point in 2001, Manning's fourth season with the Colts, and by late November had fallen to 4-6 and six after a 40-21 loss at the hands of the 49ers. Jim Mora stepped up to the podium and was greeted with a question about Indy's playoff chances. Hold on, we'll get to that. Five years earlier, Mora was in New Orleans, stuck having to answer for his Saints' disgusting loss to the Panthers, in which his team could only muster up a touchdown. I'll let him say it better than I can. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. In the second half, we sucked. No one knows what diddly poo means, not even Mora, but it was only a matter of time until he put together a post-game soundbite of that caliber in Indy. And sitting at four and six, provoked with a question about the playoffs, this was the time for an iconic roasting of his underperforming team. And that was a disgraceful performance, in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave them the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. What's that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Mora, who's hard of hearing, didn't even hear the whole question, just the word playoffs, which was enough to set him off. The Colts indeed missed the playoffs the only time a healthy Peyton Manning was out of the postseason after his rookie season. One of my favorite sayings of all time is, empires aren't built in comfort zones. And if you have goals, whether they be career, fitness, relationships, good music is going to be part of that. That's why Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price with zero compromise. Just like you, they do things different. They set themselves apart by prioritizing the customer experience. Trailblazers like Mike Tyson, Melissa Etheridge, and Snoop Dogg all rock Raycon. And now you can too. Personally, I love the different styles and designs that they come in, and they're great for just sitting around and relaxing in my own home, which I do a lot of. Raycons have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact, comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Look how snug these bad boys are. So after this video, you can set your own trail on fire by going to buyraycon.com forward slash five points from the link below and get 15% off your order. Again, that's buyraycon.com forward slash five points to get 15% off your order. Raycon. And now for the most savage team roaster in all of mankind. When it came to roasting their own team, no one did it better or more frequently than former Buccaneers coach John McKay. And McKay had plenty of inspiration. He was the head coach that guided them through Tampa's inception in 1976, suffering through an 0-26 start that, if nothing else, provided us with some of the greatest one-liners of all time. McKay had plenty to say about those expansion bucks, giving us such gems as, can't stop a pass or a run, otherwise we're in great shape. And of course, when asked what he thought of the team's execution after a loss, McKay said, I'm in favor of it. When the Bucks finally broke through and won their first game in 1977, McKay was hopeful about their chances of making the postseason at 1-12, saying three or four plane crashes and were in the playoffs. McKay eventually did lead the Bucks to the playoffs by their fourth season, and despite finishing his head coaching career 44 games under 500, managed to stick around for nine seasons in Tampa Bay. Even with all the losing, how can you fire a guy who summed up coaching an expansion team by saying, you do a lot of praying, but most of the time, the answer is no. We appreciate a losing coach when they share in some of the pain the fans are feeling. And maybe that's why we love when coaches roast their own teams. Because our own frustrations as fans gets validated. And nobody made it sound as good as these guys did. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to my next video.